Yo, it's too many styles, who's the best now? Before you bow me, son, you better get your way down Imitation is the highest form of flattery, wow It's like Ace of Spades versus Cisco It's the boom, bat, boom, bat Miss Ruby V, and this is the Boom Bap Hour. We have somebody so special today on the Ruby V exclusive. Yes, representing from the great state of Minnesota. Yes, also a man with a mission. Definitely, we're definitely going to talk about that today. His name is Lee Jordan, and if you don't know who Lee Jordan is, you need to know who he is. How you doing? I'm so fantastic. I can't stand it. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. So you have a lot going on, um, Lee. So you are part of the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation, right? Yes. Yes, I am. And the thing that I like about what you guys do is seem like you, you all are talking about it 365 days a year. It's not just, you know, let's observe this holiday this one day and then yep. just let's forget about it. Right. So, Correct. um, Tell us a little bit just about what you're doing with, um, you know, the organization, uh, Juneteenth, Minnesota, and anything you're doing um, just as far as observing the holiday period. Well, I'm a firm believer that we're just not just Black in February doing Black History Month. We're, we're Black year-round. And we mm-hmm. don't just believe in freedom in, you know, in June, doing Juneteenth. It's a, it's, it's a mindset that needs to follow us wherever we go. Yeah. Uh, and so at this point in time, like I said, we, we're very pleased and, 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 and honored that we have a national holiday, which is, you know, which is important. Yeah. But what we do with that, you know, with that information and, and, this, and this point of history is an important part. And one of the things that I have been involved with here in the Twin Cities, like I said, I've been involved with Juneteenth for over 30 years. And it kind of tickles me when people go, Juneteenth, what's that? I'm thinking about myself, so you're talking about the last 30 years of my life and you're asking me what? <laughs> you know? Right. So so I'm really you know, uh, pleased and, and honored to be a part of a movement that uh, and something that really just kind of holds within the communities. It's, yes. it's, it's a celebration that's held within our communities. And it is a point in, in, in a time where we really get that opportunity to create a truly beautiful and amazing black space. Yeah. And that's yes. not, it's not to say that we don't want anyone, but it's that opportunity to create that space that when you look around you, you know, there are more people who look like you, you know, mm. doing and celebrating and commemorating something that is part of our legacy, part of our ancestors, part of our, our our movement and trying to make sure that we understand that we are not the victims of the of the descendants of slavery we are the survivors of the descendants of slavery of slaves and it's important to know that distinction because when you when you look at it from the right direction you realize that we come from resilient people we come from people that uh, continue to create and 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 to become more in, uh, involved, the uh, even in, in, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, we just we just keep creating ourselves over and over again. Yeah, and yes. each time we do it, we're bigger, better, and bolder. You know, and what we do and what we say. So Juneteenth is a big part of that uh, of, of that uh, commemoration and celebration. And at this point in time, on July on uh, August twenty eighth. And the Midwest is having their first Miss Juneteenth pageant. You know, uh, we call it uh, the Miss Juneteenth Scholarship Program because, first of all, we want uh, to make sure that we acknowledge and support our uh, the youth of our community. 
Yeah, and this is a, a wonderful way to do that. And so uh, so we're very, very excited about holding that. I will be at the uh, Urban League over on 28th and uh, Avenue North. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, I used so, to be uh, big. I used to have a lot of involvement in Urban League, yes. a lot of involvement. Yeah. So I have a, a page called Juneteenth Speaks, so all the details will be on there. It is yes. an opportunity not only to uh, to give acknowledgement to the young ladies that actually are, are very involved with the program itself, are, are, are going to be involved with the program, but it's also the opportunity to work with some of the community uh, programs in uh, that focus on young women, yeah, uh, like sex. Second Chance, uh, our, My Sister's Keeper, some of these organizations that have been around, it's a chance to acknowledge some of the young women in their, you know, in their programs as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. And not only that, but we, I have the legacy, uh, Miss Julene Jackson, who started the, uh, uh, the Miss, Minnesota, Miss Minnesota, Black Minnesota pageant here in the Twin Cities. She is helping me. Her daughter is helping me, who is also a, a queen herself. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's just this, this chance to really take a hold of something and make it even bigger and better. Because now That's it's wonderful. connected you know, with the Juneteenth on a national level. And yes, uh, I'm part of the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. I've uh, been involved with it for, you know, for quite some time. And, and one of the things we, we talk about and, 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 and continue to uh, make sure people understand that we are talking about our common bond of freedom. Because mm -hmm. none are free until we all are free. So if if we are if we're talking about uh, the standpoint of the Juneteenth celebration being a celebration of freedom, and what that means here in America, not only for you know for people of you know for all people of color, but also the chance to acknowledge what we have contributed to America. I mean, little by little, my own family history. I'm I'm finding out more and more only because I'm connecting myself with people that you'll know, go well. Did you know this? And did you know that? Yeah, and I'm like, no. And then and then we get to talking, and, and sometimes uh, get to talking to find out actually we might be kid. Uh, so so it's wow. really yeah, you know, it's really that you know uh, to me that's another part of the Juneteenth celebration in itself. That Juneteenth bigger picture. <laughs> It's on a national level that this this uh, that we are celebrated. Yeah, it's celebrated in every state in the United States. So each of them have their own story yeah, to tell mm -hmm. of our continued fight for freedom. Yeah. Yes. So to be able to bring that together, you know, once again, because you can't just do it on one day. <laughs> you know, no, but just, you can't. just continually talking about it, uh, continuously bringing up the you know the importance of our history, our contributions here in America, so that our children and our children's children will be able to walk with their heads held high, simply because they know once again that we just didn't pick cotton. We did more than that. We were a, you know, a, a huge and amazing part of the, of this system. Yeah. But yet, still, again, yeah, even with the you know the, the the horror and everything else that is a part of our of our history, we have we have survived. Yeah, I mean, we are we are the uh, an amazing and wonderful group of people, and I want people to understand that to me, and that's what I try my best to bring to Juneteenth. I do historical reenactments, yeah, so that people can actually visually see yeah you know the you know the importance of of these beautiful you know brown and and, and our colorations are just also amazing i just love it you you we're not just one shade. we just have all these amazing shades and colors to us yeah Isn't and because we have that that also means our souls and our spirits are like that as well so why yes. not you know when you look at someone you know don't ask well you know, i wonder what they got it's like they have all the things that you've got in you and more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. have a conversation with them and find out you know, more about who they are and where they come from. And because if you do that, you'll also find out more about yourself. 
Absolutely. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I got preachers on both sides of the family, oh, and it just kind of comes I, out sometimes. <laughs> I, I I love it. I love it. And I mean, the thing about it is, is, is really, you know, I mean, the cultural significance of that is just so massive, you know? Yes. And one thing that, you know, um, I just want us all to remember, because again, I'm with you, like, you know, Juneteenth, the memory of that is from as far back as I can remember. Yep. And now that's being nationally recognized, you know, let's just make sure we take the opportunity to come together and like you said, connect, learn about each other, learn about, you know, our ancestors and really take it all in. And, you know, I just don't want it to become like commercialized so that it loses its meaning because it can yes. have a tendency to do that sometimes. You know what I mean? But um, trying to, you know, monetize it in a certain way, but, you know, just remember the meaning of it. Remember the and meaning that, of it. And I think that's the important part, as you, as you said, is like as a community. Yeah. You know, if we can, you know, take, you know, and make sure that if you come into that space, you come into that space with understanding. Let's say, for instance, when we talk about sickle cell, sickle mm-hmm. cell day is also on the 19th of June. Okay. So that is the reason why it's, you know, it's called your know, National Sickle Cell Day. So it's on the 19th of June. So that's why you find a lot of the Juneteenth celebrations have, you know, some sickle cell component to it. In fact, that's one of the questions, and I'm probably letting a little bit out the bag here, but that's one of the questions of, you know, that we will be asking this Juneteenth. It's sickle cell related because mm. it, is a, it is a program that's really, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a situation that's kind of concentrated within our community. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so to give somebody that opportunity to, you know, to, to acknowledge it and to uh, even be a little bit more aware of it. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, Juneteenth is, it's much more than just a day in the park. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Miss Juneteenth, now I haven't ever even heard of another pageant for Juneteenth. Like, is this the first in the nation to do that? Or like, No, actually it's, it's our first here in the Midwest. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, once again, let a little cat out the bag here. <laughs> you just gonna let it all out. <laughs> you know, but we are, uh, I'm, I'm, working to get the first Miss Juneteenth here you know, to crown our Miss Juneteenth before the you know, the national pageant in Tulsa, Oklahoma in October. Now, that was my main goal that I wanted to make sure that we had a representative from the Midwest you know, to be represented in the national Miss Juneteenth in October. Yeah, so nice. I, that's that's the main reason why I was really trying to pull everything together to make sure that it happens. And like I said, if we people would go to the uh, Juneteenth Speaks page, all the details you know of, of how to be involved and so forth is on that page. Yeah, and then if they have any questions, they can always find me. You know, I'm on Facebook under Lee Henry Jordan. Trust me, you put the name in, this face pops up. So yeah, <laughs> so I so. I'm, I'm, I'm very much, uh, I'm honored simply because, you know, to me, this is something, first of all, that needs to happen. You know, that's number one. Yeah. Cause we've had the, the Miss Black Minnesota pageant for years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And somewhere along the line, you know, uh, for, for, for whatever reason, it kind of lost, you know, that momentum. Well, I'm ready and here to bring it, to help bring it back. That's why I wanted to work with the people that I'm working with because they've been a part of that legacy for the longest time. And to bring them back into, you know, in, into, uh, to helping to elevate, you know, the Miss Juneteenth so that we also have not only that recognition with Juneteenth, but also the recognition of the history of, of, of programs here within the Twin Cities. Definitely. Awareness. Yes, yes. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, and you are a busy person. Like <laughs> you also make films as I, well as a casting director. So do you have any new projects or anything that you know you'd like to talk about as well that you have personally going on? Well, I would say that one of the things, once again, going back to Juneteenth, as I say, when I do my historical reenactments. 
I'm, I try and, and, and bring in stories that most people are not familiar with. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we, I, I do have a, uh, a person uh, who plays General Granger for me. Yeah. And General Granger reads General Order Number Three. And when people hear this speech that was read to, you know, to their ancestors uh, about how they wanted them to uh, remain on the plantation which they, they were you know, on and seek employment from their former masters. And the first time I heard that, it just, as they said, just didn't sit right in my craw. <laughs> Because, I'm sure. <laughs> sure but, did it. but to be able to hear these words and knowing and and, and in my mind just kind of stepping back, yeah, and thinking to myself as if, if I've been a slave for the majority of my life and generations of my family have been slaves, and I'm hearing these words, do they mean anything to me? Or what do they mean to me? And how do I take you know this information and move forward, you know, to you know, to once again to a, a, a new level. And that's why I say, as far as I'm concerned, we keep, you know, changing and evolving and, and, and continuing to be these, you know, this amazing group of people because things keep, you know, happening to us and we still keep surviving it. <laughs> We've had to do it for how yeah. many years? Yes. We're going to go past 400 years. Yes. And I'm I not mean... saying that other people don't have that happen. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but I'm talking. I'm talking about my own backyard. Right, <laughs> you you're know? talking to talking to us yeah. right now. You know, so that's that's what I'm dealing with. I'm talking about my ancestors, the ones that I know that my grandfather would get off the you know, the streets. You know, when he saw some white man or white woman coming in his, his direction, he would get off the street and say, "How you doing?" You know, and I'm thinking to myself, "Wow." How much strength does that take within inside of you to you know, to kind of uh, make yourself small, even though you're larger than life. <laughs> I'm telling you that, like, we can't even fathom what no. our ancestors had to deal with just on a daily basis. Day in, I mean, day like, out. some of the things that we had took for take for granted, just like as immediate thoughts to us, like, yeah, that's cool for us to do, was like something that was not. Uh, reachable, no. you know, within their grasp at that time. And it's just, it's mind blowing all the things that they did and also how they unified to come together to make change because we really need a lot of that in today's society. You Absolutely. know, we yeah. need to take a not, page from them. And why not use some of the same tools that were used by our ancestors, you know, to even uh, in, in this day and time, you know, and, and, and really kind of solidify you know, the strength that is already ours. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, Lee, I'm such in support of everything that you are doing. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that, you know, everyone around the nation, around the globe, because we definitely have, you know, some a lot of international listeners that no matter where you are in the world, you can support. Uh, you know, the Juneteenth Speaks movement and the Miss Juneteenth yes. pageant. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I would, we would appreciate that because, like I said, this is just the beginning. Yeah, uh, and once again, I'm also <laughs> letting something out the bag here again. Okay. But, uh, I, I would like to, we like I said, we have our first Miss National Juneteenth who will be, you know, the, the uh, second uh, one will be crowned in October. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to create uh, a black doll for her so that young ladies can actually hold this doll of the first national Miss Juneteenth. So I'm, I'm trying to work with some uh, black doll designers to create this doll because I think it would be so important for them to hold something that looks like them. Someone that actually has kind of, uh, and, and like I say, to, to hear this young woman speak is, is she is just I, I'm like some proud uncle I'm you know, I, I haven't even met the young woman other than you're talking to her a couple times on the phone or Facebook note or either but you know to you know the, the fact that she has such as they say such an old soul and a young body you know, okay you know but yes, yet nice. she you know she is still um so unique in, in, in the way that she just kind of 
holds herself and, and, and presents herself to the point where I'm just, like I said, I'm just as proud as like, as any family member would be. Yeah. Wow. Because that's what the song says. We are family. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, so yes. yes, the Juneteenth Speaks page, I, I, I try and keep that updated uh, as far as, uh, you know, information, uh, as far as not only the Miss Juneteenth, but uh, Juneteenth on the national level as well, too. And it's amazing to me, I'm on a phone call every Saturday, you know, whether I want to or not, my phone rings, <laughs> yeah, and I'm on this call with the other Juneteenths across the nation. Yeah. And we talk okay. about all the plans for, yeah, for the Juneteens that we're, you know, currently working on or, or whatever, you know, we have planned for the next following year. And it is amazing to me, spiritually, how we are all sort of speaking the same language, but yet in different states. Mm. Yeah. So when we talk about, you know, the, the idea of the importance of, of taking just the concept of freedom, you know, not the fact that we, you know, it's important that we guess this happened two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. You know, that they, you know, the, the, the group of uh, the last group of, of slaves in Galveston, Texas, found out about their freedom. But when you think about that, if that was the last place, doesn't that mean that, you know, there were some other things kind of going on in some of the other states as well? Yeah, yeah, it does. So when we talk about Juneteenth as a celebration, we talk about it and the standpoint of understanding what freedom is. No matter who, if you celebrate freedom, you should be celebrating Juneteenth. As far as I'm concerned, the celebration would be from June 1st all the way through to July 4th. You know? Hello. Hello. So that we, so when we're talking about freedom, we're talking about freedom from the standpoint of, once again, none are free until we all are free. Absolutely. Yes. Hey, you couldn't have put it any better. And um, just everywhere that we can support you, let us know all the like different channels and everything that we can not only support the Juneteenth movement, the pageant, everything. Where can we definitely go to make sure if we want to be a sponsor or anything like that? Where can we go to do that? I would say once again to my uh, the Juneteenth Speaks page, you know, and there's also a website as well, you know. Uh, that you can you know, get information from and and reach out to me or if you have any questions call me every code 612-860-4974 just say Jordan I want to know about more about Juneteenth and how I can get involved and I'll be more than happy yeah and this is not just here in Minnesota this is if you're you know in Tennessee or, or Kentucky or wherever else you are at. Trust me, I can connect you up pretty much with a Juneteenth celebration in your area because like you once again, I'm, I'm in contact with the, with these amazing people. Yeah. Yes. On a day in, day out basis. Yeah. So Well, definitely just thank you for what you are doing. No, thank you. I'm so looking forward <laughs> to having y'all here. Yeah. As you know, for our for our Juneteenth celebration in 2022. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. It's going to be so awesome. So, yes, y'all definitely check out the Juneteenth Speaks movement once again. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for no, coming on our show. Thank you for everything you've done, even like you said, the past 30 years. Thank you for all of your dedication and service to our community. Okay. Thank you so very much. And have a good one now. Yes. And Talk again, Yes, it's the Boom Bap Hour. Keep it locked, y'all. Don't go anywhere.